My second layer of fillets is dry and I need to do a little bit of sanding. But before I do that, I'm going to add a little bit to this. So I've taken the shock cord, stuffed it down inside, and then put some tissue or paper towels down on top just to keep it out of the way. And now what I'm going to do is just take some regular viscosity super glue and I'm going to run it around the edge of the body tube here. And once this is dry, it will simply stiffen the cardboard a little bit and keep the edges from fraying or bending and things like this that tend to happen as we insert and remove the nose cone. So this just toughens it up a little bit. Okay, and then we're just going to let that dry for a few seconds. Not really dry, but to soak into the cardboard. And then taking some more tissue here. You can also use paper towels or a rag. I'm just going to wipe this around inside. Alright, and if it ran a little bit like mine did, that's fine. It won't hurt anything. Alright, you do want to keep from gluing your fingers to the inside of body tube though. Here I have the nose cone after several coats of filling sandable primer and a final sanding with 400 grit sandpaper. Now I can just see a little hint of the seam there. Um, the opposite side looks like it's pretty much filled in. I'm not going to worry about that. The final paint will fill that in there. And so I'll set this aside for now to paint it with the rest of the rocket. The main body of the rocket has just been primed, and so this has got uh, two coats of the fillable sandable primer on it here. It's still a bit wet, uh, but this is showing the imperfections that I still need to sand out. So we've got a little bit here. Um, looks like some residual glue that got away from me on a few parts. And so I'll do some sanding on this once it's dry and then give it a few more coats of primer and then it too will be ready for paint. I'm currently in the process of painting the rocket here. So for the nose cone I've got this purple which is supposed to be glossy and is not very but we're going with it anyway. Um, this has had two coats over the primer and I'm going to give it at least one more coat before we call it done. So it's in progress. The main body of the rocket is going to be fluorescent yellow, but for that paint to uh, appear correctly, it needs a base coat of white. So that's what I've done here. We put on a couple of coats of gloss white paint, and as soon as this dries a bit more, I'll go ahead and put the fluorescent yellow on top of that. Here's the body of the rocket after one coat of the fluorescent yellow paint, and notice it's turned into this alligator skin type stuff. Um, now it's not the usual crinkling we sometimes see with paints, but this the paint is actually separated. And I think what's happening here is it does not like to adhere to the glossy white, uh, which means I probably should have used a flat white undercoat for this. So I'm going to have to go back and do some sanding, um, redo the undercoat, and then we'll try this again. Here's my rocket after I've sanded off the crinkled fluorescent yellow and I've now applied a new base coat of flat white this time. And so I'm going to try once more with the fluorescent yellow paint. I'm going to start just with one patch of it though and make sure that we don't get this same problem again. Here I've given it a light coating of the yellow paint and it appears to be behaving itself so we'll try it with the full rocket. I've added two coats now of the yellow fluorescent paint, but I've noticed here, I'm going to try and get this close up, okay, there's some little brownish flecks in here that are in the paint, and I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't think it's pigment. It could be that there's rust in the paint can, um, but I think I'm just going to give up on the fluorescent orange or fluorescent yellow here. And I'm just going to spray paint this with a, a normal yellow enamel once this dries. 
The yellow enamel worked much better than the fluorescent paint did, so I'm just going to go with that. I'm now ready to make the final assembly here, so I'm going to take out that wad of paper stuff here so we can get back to our shock cord. Alright, and then we're going to attach the nose cone here. And I'm just going to use a double knot or two half hitches. Okay, and go ahead and pull this from every direction. Make sure that knot gets nice and tight. And you want to make sure that this part here um, doesn't extend out to where it could get caught between the shoulder and the body tube, which could prevent ejection of the parachute. Right, I'm going to trim this back, even though it's okay. Don't trim it all the way back to the knot, but about, leave about five or six millimeters or quarter of an inch there. And then you can apply just a little bit of white or wood glue to that knot to keep it from unraveling. Okay. Doesn't need a lot, just a little bit in there. Just kind of work it into the knot. And that can dry. Now to attach the parachute, um, the instructions have us tie a loop here in the shock cord. I really don't want to do that with a rubber shock cord. Uh, that just makes a big weak spot there. So instead, I'm going to use a short piece of Kevlar. This is 100 pound test Kevlar, which should be more than enough for this rocket. And I'm just going to take a short length of this. And then just tie a loop okay just a, a little overhand knot there and now I can take that whole loop I'm going to put it through the eyelet like this and then I'm going to put the loop through itself and now I've just got a short piece here that I can clip my parachute or tie my parachute into just like that and then it's also a good idea to put just a little drop of super glue on this knot just one little dab there I'm also going to put some up on these frayed ends here but this will keep that knot from coming undone Okay, and then I can just wipe off the excess there. That's going to dry really quickly. And now I'm just going to cut off the frayed area here. Okay, and then from this point you can pack this however you like to pack your parachutes. Uh, I'm not going to pack mine for launch right now. I'm just going to get the parachute out of the way. I'm just going to loosely pack this. All right, a lot of people don't want to pack their parachutes for storage, but for right now I don't want to lose mine, so I'm just going to put it all in here. Now, coming up, we'll do the decals, um, but I'm not going to use the uh, pattern that they have on here. I probably won't even use all of the regular decals. Um, I am going to decorate this for Father's Day, Big Daddy, yep. Um, and so I'm going to use a, some different decals that have more of a Father's Day uh, theme to them, but I will use some of the ones from the kit just to show you how they're done. Before I do the decals, I want to draw your attention to this little piece here. So if you haven't flown mid-power rockets a lot before, uh, what this does is it acts as a spacer for using C11 and D12 sized motors. So our motor mount here will accept the longer E-series motors, 
but if you wanted to do a shorter motor in there like a C or a D, you simply place this into the motor mount first and then put the motor in so that the motor doesn't jiggle back and forth in there. If you're flying this on an E or on a composite motor, you don't need this part. For the decals, we're going to need a small basin of water here to soak the decals in. They're all water slide decals. And if we look at the packaging here, um, this is the suggested placement of the decals. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to use most of these. I'm going to use some different decals. Um, I will definitely use the Big Daddy one here. Um, the diamonds here that go on the nose cone probably won't show up on mine since I have a, a darker color there. So I probably won't use those. Though I will use the larger ones that go on either side of the Big Daddy decal there. So to get started, we're going to need to cut out the decals. The way they show this um, would, would be that the Big Daddy here is opposite the launch lug, and then the two big diamonds there would be on either side. And we've got a second Big Daddy decal there, but it would it would end up going here, and that's going to interfere with the launch lug. The first thing to do then is to cut out the decals, and I recommend just doing these one at a time so that you don't misplace or lose them or accidentally drop water on them or something. And you can use either scissors or a hobby knife, whichever you're most comfortable with. Alright, and try and trim as close to the actual decal as you can. And I like to kind of round the edges and the corners here a little bit. Just because corners are often spots that lift up. Alright, now we're just going to soak this in the water here. Usually takes about 15 to 20 seconds. Now I think I'm going to do this 90 degrees from what the uh, instructions or the, the diagram shows on the packaging here. So I'm going to put the big daddies on either side. Now we'll see how well this shows up on my uh, yellow here. Alright, so as soon as these start sliding, that's when you want to take them off. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just slide the edge off there. So I don't know if you can see the clearness there. Right, I'm just going to lay this down now and kind of center it, position it the way you want it. Alright, then I'll hold that piece that's I've already slid off there. And then I'm just going to pull the backing off. Okay, now the trick here if you do need to reposition this is to hold tension on it while you kind of move the whole thing at once. For the rest of the decals, I'm using some self-adhesive ones here, and I've got some dad-themed uh, decals that I got from my local hobby store. And these are just peel and stick. Alright, so I'm, I'm just going to start with the, the dad one here. Alright, and then it's just a matter of finding a good place for it. I think I'm gonna, well, they're both purple. That won't work there. Okay, 
So it looks like we're going to put this one down by the fins. Now these tend to grab fairly quickly so I'm just going to lightly place that in on there first. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good position. And then just squish it down and use your finger to get the air out there. Okay, I'm going to continue this um, with various and sundry decals and come back when I've got it finished. Here's my finished Big Daddy then with all of the Father's Day style stickers attached to it. I hope you had a good time building this with me. Have a great launch and a safe recovery. And please stay tuned for more of my videos.